Well, thanks for checking out these clips on the web show as we say goodbye to one of Australia's great sports stars in basketball, Shane the Hammer Heel, a guy that's pretty much done everything on the court, and that's the image we associate with Shane, one of the best three-point shooters, natural shooters that you'll just ever see. Always exciting to watch, no matter which team he played for. He won championships with Sydney, played in Brisbane, played in the NBA, and of course represented Australia at four different Olympic Games. It's quite incredible, and you can read all about it at his website, shaneheel.com.au and on February 14th Valentine's Day 2009 Shane was playing his last game after 21 years as a professional and I went along to the practice before the game with the Blaze play on the Gold Coast and while the guys shot around I sat down with the man himself here he is here we are Gold Coast Convention Center uh, Shane Heel how are you champ? very well mate looking forward to a big game tonight it's a pretty big day isn't it so tell us why well it's my last game 21 years playing professionally and four different countries so it's um yeah it's exciting i'm ready mentally and physically for it so i'm ready to have a couple of beers after the game tonight and, and celebrate with the fellas yeah you got a smile on your face but uh is there almost a little bit of like close to tears i wouldn't it? i mean waking up this morning thinking this could be it this is it. No, 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 not, not tears. There's been a lot of reflection this week. I've actually gone back and looked at a few videotapes from when I was playing in 1988 and <laughs> a few of the fellas saw it in one of our uh, team sessions and I had the long bogan locks and, yep. and all the rest of it. So uh, one of the fellas said that uh, time hasn't been kind to me. Um, <laughs> there's been a bit of stress in the meantime over the last 21 years. <laughs> well, mate, I love stories and doing a show about stories. So tell us a little bit about how it all got going. I mean, what forced you to pick up a basketball in the first place? Well, my parents were into basketball, and my dad was uh, my junior coach and for footy and for basketball, and um, I just loved it. I was so passionate about it, and I'd just stay outside for hours and just shoot and shoot and shoot, and put goals in, and, you know, I actually used to visualise, um, you know, that I was in a situation where we were down by two and there was five seconds to go, and I'd <laughs> yeah. commentate and everything, and I'd be three, two, one, heel shoots, and it'd go in, and I'd run around and, you know, be the hero, and then it'd, it'd miss, and I'd go three, two, one, miss, mm, half time. <laughs> And, um, but I used to, you know, it's about visualising and dreaming and all the rest of it, and I was just so passionate about making it happen. Well, tell us about dreams, mate, because I remember having you on the radio and we talked about when you played in the NBA. That must have been a dream for you all the time growing up. But take us through your career a little bit, the things you've done. Well, probably the biggest dream for me was to play for Australia. And I think any Australian, no matter what sport they play, always wants to put on the green and gold and you know to go to four Olympics was was very special but to go to um, the Sydney Olympics I think was the biggest thing for me and to be able to play in Olympic Games in front of friends and family here and you know the camaraderie and just the way the whole Australians treated the Olympic Games was was amazing and uh, you know I did get a chance to play in the NBA for uh, for two teams and you know that was special because for different reasons just that it's the number one league in the world and I didn't ever expect to be able to go and be in that situation so that was pretty eye-opening. Yeah man so tell us a little bit more about the NBA then I mean you're there on the court like I think I asked you this on the radio and there's guys like you know the caliber of Barkley and Jordan and stuff you're there right amongst it you're kidding aren't you I mean you're totally living the dream yeah I mean I, at stages I was pinching myself on the bench and sitting there saying you know <laughs> here we are we're at, you know the Lakers and Jack sitting over there and playing against Kobe awesome. and Shaq and everything you know a lot of the times I wish I had one of my mates sitting next to me saying mate look at look at this and then you know, getting on and, and um, you know, I was pretty impatient. I wanted to play straight away and I only averaged seven minutes a game in my first year. But, you know, I had some highlights and, and a lot of good memories to, to look back on. Yeah, and a lot of great memories for us, the fans, to remember Shane by as well. Truly a superstar. And here's a montage of the Hammer doing his thing. So there he is, the awesome Shane Heal and some of the highlights from his career and a great opportunity to sit down with him on the web show. What's the life like of a basketballer? I mean, how hard do you work for, for your sport? I mean, you, you train a lot? Yeah, I mean, you make a lot of sacrifices and you train a lot, but um, mate, to be able to do what you love doing, your passion, and get paid for it, and to be able to travel and everything else, it, 
very, very fortunate for someone who didn't finish high school. So, you know, I probably would have had an apprenticeship and, um, you know, probably wouldn't have left Australia had I not um, not had the chance to be able to do what I do. So where have you played? I mean, you, you went over to Europe for a while? Yeah, I had three years in Greece, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, Greece is, I mean, it's the most powerful league outside the NBA and, um, you know, a lot of pressure on as an import playing there and I was with my first club for two years and I held down one import spot and I played with other eight other Americans in the other spot that just kept getting cut. It was, you know, pressure's on but, you know, the fans were crazy and, um, you know, very passionate people and, you know, the drums and the riot police and, you know, the smoking in the stadiums. It was just, you know, an amazing atmosphere and when you come back to Australia it's like people are at the choir watching the basketball compared, right. to, compared to Europe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, you spoke before about you know playing for Australia is such a highlight. What would be if you could think of a couple of top highlights in your career, personally, like you know for a team or a performance? I know you shot five threes in one quarter one time in the NBA, legendary effort. But what would be your top moments? I think winning a championship uh, with the Kings was was unbelievable because no one ever thought the Kings would win one. So to captain that team was great. Um, I guess to have sixty one points in a game in the NBL was. Um, was a highlight. Fair effort. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a lot of points, and I certainly can't replicate those sort of efforts right now. Um, and then I guess to have five threes and a quarter in the NBA was, um, again, I, I guess it was a high highlight. But at the same time, I thought that I'd done enough then to be able to go on and play a lot more court time. And so it turned into a bit of a disappointment because I remember the next game I played 16 seconds, and then yeah. I didn't get on for five straight games after that. So like a movie scene. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the highs and lows. So. Just looking at the coach, thinking, "Dude, come on, help, put me in." Yeah, I've had a, a yell from the crowd, "Put heel in, put heel in." <laughs> but uh, no, it didn't happen as much. I had to be patient. What advice do you have for young people out there? I mean, obviously you're a hero in sports in Australia. What would advice do you have for young people about chasing their dreams? If it's not basketball, life in general, what would you say? Well, I think that the biggest thing is you've got to have passion in whatever you do. So whether you're making movies and interviews and whatever, you've got to be passionate about you know, doing the best job you can. And um, I think when you're passionate about it, then you start putting a lot of work and, and effort in. And you can deal with the highs and lows easier when you're passionate about something and you've got goals. I think the other thing is the, the, the more you, you practice and the more you put in, the more confident you become in your own abilities to be able to achieve things. Um, but, you know, you're always going to have some highs and lows and, you know, you're going to fail a lot of times in your career like I have and uh, you have to take it on the chin and dust yourself off and get back up and have another crack. So how are you feeling about tonight, mate? Last game, I mean, do you visualise the game? Are you, are you ready to just knock down a bunch of threes for this big crowd tonight for you? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm leading the league in assists, but I know CJ Bruton is right there, so I'm going to be trying to get a lot of assists tonight because I'd like to be able to finish the, my career you know, with that, I've always taken a lot of pride in that. But, um, you know, hopefully there's a couple of trifectas to go with it and we can finish with a win and, and then we can celebrate for um, a few days afterwards. Well, mate, great to have a quick chat with you here. You're an absolute legend of the game. And, uh, yeah, mate, all the best and Thanks, great you. career. On you, mate. Thank you.